Hi students, today we're going to be doing an art lesson based on prehistoric storytelling and how cave paintings tell a story. So today you're going to be doing your own cave painting. What are cave paintings? They're pictures that were painted on the inside of the walls of caves by prehistoric humans and who used them, how they communicated. Early humans used them to tell stories to each other, entertainment, and record history in general and other things they thought were very important to their culture. And why are they important in, to history? Well, historians use them today as a way to look back to what other people wrote about and painted in the case of those who did cave paintings. For instance, a lot of the early humans were hunters gatherers. So there's a lot of hunting scenes, rituals, deities, and humans, and pretty much anything that revolved around their culture that they could do in the simplified version on the cave. And today, what we're going to learn, what were the most common materials used by the majority of those who did the cave paintings, and some of the most common themes, subjects that you'll see a lot in most every cave painting type. And then how to turn your own self-written narrative about what something you did into a cave painting. Also, how to use primarily just lines to create the basic shapes in a cave art. And what we're going to be practicing to do this, we're going to be using our writing skills, drawing, and analyzing skills. So looking at what others did or ourselves and seeing how it worked out and how easily pictures can convey versus just words. Some of the cave painting examples, we have the Las Cox paintings, aka the prehistoric Sistine Chapel. They're located in southwestern France, and they're pretty old, at least 17,000 circa to 15,000 BCE. And the materials they usually use are red, yellow, and black minerals. And on top of that, they had different tools that they'd use. So they'd ho use hollow bones to blow pigment and paint through in, like in front of a hand or something to do a silhouette or just scatter paint. They made their own stencils, which could be done with rocks and other materials. And they had brushes, usually from animal hair, their own hair, and sticks. Sticks you could they would rub the end so it got all soft at the end and they could use that as a brush as well. And most commonly in those, there were horses, deer, bison, felines, which are cats, and bulls, as well as some humans. It's called the Prehistoric Sistine Chapel because those paintings are so well preserved and very detailed, people thought they were fake. And actually, a group of kids and their dogs stumbled into the cave and found it. So most often cave paintings are discovered by accident. And another one is the Altamira cave. It's in northwest northern Spain. And the time period's also around the 15,000 to 10,000 BCE and a little bit further back. Materials, they again use red, yellow, and black with charcoal and minerals. Features most commonly horses, deer, hands, and masks this time. Masks are important because they're used in cultural and spiritual things, such as um, celebrations and worship to their deities. Another well-known one is the Chavet cave. Location is in north southern France. And the period is circa 33,000 to 30,000 years old. 
and materials are just simply red and black charcoal and minerals. So they probably didn't have as much diverse resources in that area, so they used what they had available to make their cave paintings. And in that case, they used for their animals, it depends on the region. They had lions, bears, rhinos. They used their hands again and geometric shapes. So geometric shapes, a lot of time it involves straight lines to get a distinct shape into their and help with their art. And another one is the Cueva de las Manos, also known in English as the Cave of Hands. It's located in southern Argentina, time periods about 7,300 before Christ BC. The materials, red, purple, white, yellow, and black minerals. So they had an extra color in there. And it features humans, the sun, hunting, rhinos, felines, and hands. So the sun in most ancient cultures had a significant impact and was heavily featured. And then hunting, they were hunter-gatherers. So hunting's a quite predominant thing to see in cave paintings as well. And another cave painting example is the Magara Cave. It's located in Northwest Bulgaria. The time period's 8,000 to 4,000 years ago. Materials, they used bat guano. So that is bat poop. And it features people, animals, hunting, ceremonies, and their own deities. So in this type, it's a lot of stick figures type silhouette. As you can see by the picture, and the animals are fully colored in most often. This also heavily features lines and other shapes that are pretty basic. So to start our lesson, we're gonna need writing paper, a pencil or pen, and a highlighter for the writing part. And once we're done with that part, we're gonna head outside where you can get sticks, chalk, one to five colors to keep it simple because the people that did the paintings did not have as much resources, so they used what was there. Your hand for hand painting, finger painting, a water cup, so you can wet the chalk and make your own paint, and then a sidewalk or concrete area. So I just use a sidewalk square for mine, but really anywhere that you can use the chalk will work. For the first step, we write out a short story about something you did. So we're not gonna go into a historical narrative. But similar to how the ancient humans did it, we'll write our own narrative. So mine was about going camping with a friend in the mountains, where we hiked, we made a fire to eat, we watched the sunset and the stars, we looked for our favorite constellations in the stars, another way of navigating stars are heavily featured in paintings as well. And then some deer came out, so I also wrote about that and then going to bed. And then the second step is to highlight the main aspects of your story. For instance, the main aspects was I hiked over some mountains in pink. And in yellow, I stopped to make camp. In purple, I sat on some rocks and made a fire. And then in yellow, looked out for our favorite constellations in the stars. And then again in pink, we came out and we watched the deer eat grass. And then lastly in yellow, we went into our tent going to sleep. And then step three is where we sketch out those key aspects. So for our sketch, it's not going to be too detailed because cave paintings, 
weren't very detailed with some exceptions to the really detailed ones. So we're going to use the basic lines for human shape. I noticed some of the human shape cave paintings besides just stick figures. There's a triangular form for the torso, but otherwise it's mostly stick figures and basic lines to convey shapes. There's also basic shapes like a circle for the sun, triangle, and so on. And then for my sketch, each section has the corresponding highlighter colored over the number. And then step four, you get to go out and draw your cave art. I did a rough sketch in white to figure out if it would work on the concrete. And then I went over everything. And then to make your chalk paint, you rub the chalk on the sidewalk on the side and then add your water to it and then you make a paint texture which you can put on your hands and hit the concrete with that and make handprints as seen on the lower right bottom of my cave painting. Or you can use your fingers or your sticks to dip in the paint and fill out the shapes as done with my deer in the middle bottom of my painting. And then another way is you can just use the chalk as normal and draw on the concrete as it was. And then step five is cleaning up. If you did the paint method or just handling chalk in general, you got chalk all over your hands. So make sure you put your chalk up. And if you did the water method on your chalk painting, cave painting, try to avoid stepping on it so you don't track it in. And then go and wash your hands. Chalk's a very messy thing, but it's very handy for this project and easy to use. And then our last thing is to analyze and share your painting with others. You can look at each other's cave art and see what other people think you did your painting on and if they can guess your story. And if it's just you, you can have others like your parents, your friends look to see if they can guess what your art shows. And then you can discuss how well it worked and see what other ways it would be more effective to do it. Like if there's too much going on, maybe simplify it. I know mine had a bit going on, so it was a little bit harder for people to understand. And then finally, there's some questions I want to ask so you guys can consider them before we meet up again. The first one is which of the five cave art examples use something besides minerals and charcoal? for the cave artwork. Second one is, in English, what does Cueva de las Manos mean? Third, which cave paintings are also known as the prehistoric Sistine Chapel? Fourth, how did your artwork help us figure out the stories written? And how is it similar to how historians, people who study the history of past cultures, use cave art to figure out the past? And finally, what are the most common figures used in the cave painting examples you saw? And were some of those used in your art? And then just for fun, let me know which one you guys like the most, just because they're pretty cool. And then finally, I look forward to seeing your guys' paintings and have a great day till we meet again.